Hello, I'm Goblin. So what I do on my channel is I find people's firsthand paranormal experiences around the internet and then I tie them back to folklore or overlaps in phenomenon. But my main focus is the stories. That's my interest. So it only seems fair that I read all these stories and I share my own experiences. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I say tonight even though it's clearly daylight right now. But nighttime's a state of mind. It's always nighttime on my channel. I'm standing in this creek because that's going to be one of the factors that play into my experiences that I'm going to share that were all childhood experiences I had. This isn't the creek that was that's in my story, but nevertheless, it also has this creepy little tunnel that isn't exactly like the tunnel that's in my story too, but these elements do have a part in my stories that I'm going to share tonight. So these are by no means going to be all of my paranormal experiences. Um, I've had quite a few, but these are all going to be ones I had in my childhood home. So between the ages of, I don't know, six or seven to um, 10 or so. Yeah, so just wanted to uh, pop on for the little intro, but for the rest of the video, you can just listen. So I am going to share my experiences regarding what I believe to be a haunted house. So when I say what I believed to be a haunted house, what I mean is I don't really know what these experiences were. As a child, I interpreted them as paranormal or ghostly experiences, but I can't say for sure. I'm not sure if they were things that had perfectly normal explanations or if maybe it was some kind of paranormal phenomenon but not a ghost. I don't know. But the fact remains that these memories have lasted in my mind throughout all this time. I have also, over the years, as time passes, doubted these experiences. There has been times where I really just thought maybe I imagined it, I misremembered it, it didn't really happen. But like I said, I do still remember very specific instances very clearly. And for a couple of these experiences, there were other people with me. So I'm going to be talking about the house I grew up in, spent my childhood in, up until the age of about probably when I started high school around that time. And this was in the suburbs. This was a single story, fairly small home with a basement. And the, the house was on this drive that was kind of like an oversized cul-de-sac. It would come off of this main suburban road, which was a fairly quiet road, a little bit of traffic. And my street would come off it onto a hill, and the street was basically a circle. I had a creek that hugged the bottom. This creek went under the main road. I loved this creek. I spent so much time in that creek. I'll talk more about that later. I had a really nice backyard that was really big and had an above ground pool with wood paneling. And behind my house, there was a little woods. Not huge. This was the suburbs. But there was still enough of it where we would get foxes and turkey and deer. Now most of it is gone, been developed, but there is still, they did keep a nice walking path through what's left of it. Uh, and I would spend a lot of time in the woods as well. I do have siblings, but I am quite a bit, there's quite an age gap between me and the rest of my siblings. So by the time I was 10, all of them were gone to college. They all moved for college. Before that, they were teenagers, so they were out with their friends. I had a single mom, so I did spend a fair amount of time alone 
And I always did love spooky things. I was very interested in ghosts and really into ghost hunting. So I'm thinking maybe that's why I thought of these experiences as ghosts. That was the context I had. So the things that would happen in this house was kind of just your general run-of-the-mill haunted house kind of stuff. Noises, footsteps, really just sounding like someone is in the house that isn't there. Just kind of going about their business, but there isn't anyone there for the most part. I remember footsteps in the hallway outside of my room when I was not asleep, but at night when I should be asleep and everyone else should be asleep. Well, just my mom. But um, here's someone just pacing through the hall back and forth in front of my door. And this wasn't a very long hall. It was kind of a little L-shaped hall. Just kind of pacing the hall and these really measured, quiet steps. Sounded like someone in shoes, but quiet. But not like someone is trying to be quiet, you know, like it was my mom who was maybe trying to be quiet not to wake me up. I'm not sure. But my door was closed, so I couldn't see if there actually was anyone in the hall or not. But it was creeped me out. I always thought it was kind of weird. Maybe that sound was something else. I don't know. But I always thought it was kind of weird. So we had a computer room. That was one of the rooms. Upstairs, there was my bedroom, my mom's bedroom, and the computer room. As well as the living room, dining room, and kitchen. The computer room had a door and really just a desk. One of those old, white clunky monitors, computer monitors with a floppy disk and everything. I spent a lot of time on the computer and I liked playing computer games too. I still go back to some of those old computer games that I would play as a kid. Heroes Chronicles is one of them if anyone has any nostalgia for that series. Anyway, I loved spending time on the computer as I still do. So of course, when I get home from school, my mom's a single mom, she's at work, so I walk home from school, let myself in, and just hang out until she gets home from work. And I'd usually go straight to the computer room if I didn't want to be outside or if I wasn't hanging out with a friend. So I remember one day, I'm home alone, it is daytime, I'm on the computer, I'm just doing my thing, and I hear from across the house, if I'm on the front side of the house, and you go to the computer room, you turn left turn right, there's the kitchen. On the back wall of the house, in the kitchen, are the stairs to the basement. So I hear someone coming up the basement stairs, but these are the loudest footsteps. Like someone is in boots and just stomping as hard as they can up the basement stairs. Like it's almost shaking the house, I feel like. No one is home. (laughs) It's just me. But I don't know what to think in that moment except for someone's coming up the stairs. Uh, My dog, who's with me in the room, Patches, rest in peace, Patches, he also hears it and he gets up and he's looking out the door in that direction, ears up on high alert, like this is strange, he didn't expect anyone to be home either. But he doesn't leave the room, he stays in the room with me and he's just kind of looking out that way. So these big stomping steps are coming up the stairs. But when they get to the top of the stairs, they stop. Those footsteps progress into the kitchen or any further into the house. It's just these big stomping steps up the basement stairs and then they stop. And that was very strange. I didn't know what to think. This wasn't some other sound that I certainly would have been familiar with in my house. We didn't have some crazy air conditioning or heats that would kick on like this. Uh, And you know what the sound of someone coming up your basement stairs sounds like. So that was kind of that. I definitely did not go and investigate and see if anyone was in the house. I didn't hear anything else. I think I probably just stayed in the computer room until my mom got home. And I didn't tell her about it. I don't think. I don't remember telling her about it. Eventually, my dog laid back down, and that was that, but that was very strange and uh, scary. Thinking that someone's in the house all of a sudden, and it's these big, imposing steps. Very strange. Another memory I have from being in the computer room, but I believe this was probably at nighttime, when I was supposed to be asleep, but 
I would creep out of my room, which was right next to the computer room, and pop in there and close the door and turn on the computer with all the lights off, thinking that I was sneaky. Like, if my mom got up, she wouldn't see the light from the computer under the door or probably hear the clacking from those old keyboards, right? Uh, But I never got caught. Or if she saw me in there, she didn't ever say anything. So I'm in the computer room in the middle of the night when my mom's asleep. The door is closed, but I hear someone in the kitchen putting dishes away. The sound of plates being put away into the cabinet and cabinet doors closing and humming. A woman humming as they're doing this. Just a very domestic sound. And you would think it would just be my mom, but it's not my mom because she's asleep. She wasn't one to have insomnia or do things in the middle of the night. And all the lights are off in the house. So I'm not sure what that was. And again, I don't think I investigated. No, I didn't check to see if someone actually wasn't in the kitchen. But if my mom had gotten up to go do dishes, um, she probably would have told me to get off the computer and go to bed. Now, these things did happen a long time ago. When I was a child. And I do remember them. I do remember the footsteps coming up the stairs. I remember hearing someone putting away dishes and humming in the kitchen. But I don't remember all the details to these moments. I don't remember my exact reaction. I don't remember the exact circumstances. I, I just do really clearly remember those things happening. Another one I remember quite clearly with a little bit more detail, is being in the basement one day. And our basement was partially finished. There were two rooms. It was a large basement. I mean, the basement was the entire size of the house. I guess that's pretty standard. I don't know. But there was, of course, the laundry room. There were two bedrooms built into the basement for my brother, one for my brother and one for my sister. So those were finished, but it wasn't super, super finished. It was pretty bare bones. And there was also this bathroom, God, that looked like, I swear, in my memory at least, it looked like the saw bathroom. It was a tiny bathroom with one of those showers that is like a standing stall shower with the glass sliding door. It was fogged glass, kind of grimy looking. So you just didn't, you didn't, I never, I never used that shower The sink was kind of, I don't know. I asked my sister about this too, who lived in the basement. She's like, yeah, the bathroom was terrible. I guess it just wasn't finished. It wasn't really loved on that much, but had really poor light coming in because it was in the basement. Really just creepy bathroom. That has nothing to do with anything. Um, So I remember being in the basement one day and this was at a time when my siblings had gone away for college, but I wanted to hang out in my sister's room and just go through her things. On this particular day, I was going through this little box, it was maybe like a tin or some kind of like cigar box of foreign currency she had. Different coins like pesos or different European coins from her travels abroad. So I was just doing that. I could hear on the other side of the wall my mom doing laundry, putting laundry in the washer, closing the doors to the washer and dryer, humming as she's doing so. And I call out to her to ask her for something. And then I hear these footsteps above me on the first floor, going through the house, up to the basement stairs. And then my mom calls out from the top of the stairs, what? What do you need? She answers me and she's upstairs. And then I don't hear anyone humming or doing laundry anymore. And I realize that she wasn't in there doing laundry But I heard a woman humming and going about these domestic activities. And that time I definitely just ran upstairs. Ran out of my sister's room, ran upstairs. I did have a vantage point if I wanted to, to look into the the laundry room, see if anyone was there. I don't remember if I did or not. I know there wasn't anyone there because there was just me and my mom in my house. And she was upstairs. I don't know. I don't remember telling her about this. If if I, I don't think I did. Um... So it was interesting because I would hear these kind of, like I was saying at the beginning, it just sounded like someone was in the house going about domestic activities, but there's no one there. So it was strange. I don't remember being 
terrifying. It was weird. It was a little unnerving, but almost a little interesting because I was interested in those kinds of things. Ghosts. And it is not the scariest thing you can hear. It just sounds like some things that maybe your mother would be doing in a comforting, kind of a non-threatening maternal activity. So I started to think that maybe there was multiple different ghosts in the house. This was one of them. Does laundry. Does dishes. And I also thought that there was another ghost in the garage that I just thought was different. I just had a feeling that it was different. So in the garage, I would also feel like I heard someone moving around when there wasn't anyone there. Even sometimes when I was in there. Nothing overt. Just little clinking or you just felt like you heard a little noise in the room. But no one was in there. One day, I got the idea. I don't know why, but I was outside of the garage and the garage door was closed. And for some reason, I... I, maybe maybe at first I had put my ear up to the door of the garage to hear if I could move, hear anyone moving around. I had decided that there was a man in the garage. I hadn't seen anyone or heard anyone. This is just what I decided. I do remember sometimes the back door of the garage that went into the backyard. It was a door, a regular door with four windows. I feel like sometimes I would just catch a glimpse out of the corner of my eye. It seemed like there was someone at the door or something. But I didn't really have a reason for deciding that there was a man in the garage that wasn't the woman in the house. Felt like a different energy, I guess. So I put my ear up to the garage door and I felt like I could hear someone in there moving around. And I decided to do the shave and a haircut knock. You know, dut, da 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 And then I put my ear back up and I got a response. It seems like I got the dut dut, the two knocks back that you're supposed to get to that knock, right? Shave and haircut, two bits. I really thought I got that. So I was like, well, let me try that again. And so I did it again, knocked, put my ear up to the garage door, and I felt like I got a response. And I felt like this was happening consistently in response to knocks. Like I said at the beginning, I don't know if there's some sort of explanation to what I was actually hearing, but I thought it was very interesting at the time. And a little later that day, I had a friend come over, but I ended up telling her about what I was doing or what I had done, and she wanted to try, and she did, and she said she heard it too, and she got really excited. She's like, oh my gosh, this is so weird, and she totally believed me that it was a ghost or something. She ended up spending the night, and she was really interested by the house maybe being haunted and we were in my room and we decided to pull out a Ouija board. I guess we had, I mean, we had a Ouija board, obviously. Maybe it was just standard to have one in those days. I mean, it is um, through a board game company, right? Like Mattel or something. Maybe it was just standard in those days to have a Ouija board in your house. But I don't remember using it before then. But my friend wanted to use it. We pulled it out and we're in my room with the door shut and we start asking questions. I don't remember exactly what we asked, but probably standard. We do our questions. Who are you? What's your name? We weren't getting any response on the Ouija board, but we're doing it. And I hear from across the house this banging, this really loud knocking, kind of like do, do, do. It's like steady thumping. And it really felt like it like shook the house. It was so loud. So I guess what it, where it ended up coming from was the wall that connects the house to the garage. The garage was an add-on, I guess, because on the wall in the living room that was attached to the garage, there were windows, regular windows, that looked into the garage. And we had blinds on them, or I think blinds. At something covering them. Maybe they were covered on the garage side, but you couldn't just see into the garage. But I always thought it was really creepy that we had these windows <laughs> that just looked into the garage. Anyway, so there was this knocking was coming from this really, really loud knocking. It was on that wall. So loud. It, it felt like it was shook the house. And my mom was sitting on the couch that kind of teed off that wall watching TV. And she actually said... She said, I don't know what you're doing, but you better stop it because you're, whatever you're doing, you're making it mad. And I guess she was talking about whatever was in the garage. She knew we were messing with the Ouija board. 
I had told her at some point that I thought the house was haunted because I do remember her not believing me. My sister thought it was haunted too. I ha- I don't remember. I don't know exactly what my sister experienced. I still need to catch up with her and figure out what her specific experiences were because I don't remember having any together with my sister, but we do agree. She's told me that she thinks that house was haunted too, and she's had experiences. And we would both tell my mom that, and she's like, no, no, I don't really believe in that kind of thing. I don't think so. But at one point, my mom did tell me that she heard someone talking in the basement. I haven't asked her about that in adulthood. Anyway, I guess she knew that I thought there was a ghost or something in the garage. So she heard she heard this banging. It's right next to her. And she told us to stop, stop messing with whatever we we're doing, because we were upsetting whatever was in the garage. I thought that was interesting that she said that because she really wasn't into it like I was. And she was dead serious. She was dead serious. And it was not my mom. I don't believe that it was my mom who knocked on the wall like that. She's not a jokester. She's really not a prankster. Honestly, she really doesn't have that great of a sense of humor. I'm sorry. Sorry, mom. So that's not something she would do to scare us. She's That's not her personality. And also, she was... She would not bang on a wall like that. Mm-mm. That is not that is not something my mother would do. Also, I don't think my mom could bang that hard enough on a wall to shake the house. So we did put the Ouija board away immediately and we stopped and that really freaked me out. And I never used a Ouija board after that. I kind of just don't now out of like just a safety precaution. Better safe than sorry, right? I mentioned the creek earlier and I did this whole intro. That was not the creek that's in my story but I still love going in creeks. So I had a creek growing up that ran from the bottom of my street where it intersected with the main road and it ran all the way back through those woods that were behind my house and back into this neighborhood behind my house and beyond. I mean, I honestly don't know how long this creek is. Um, One time I tried to walk as far as I could in it, which I thought was a huge accomplishment. And then I did it again as an adult and I was like wow (laughs) you know you think everything's so big I thought the walls to this creek were giants and these waterfalls and you go there and you're like oh wow (laughs) it's interesting to get the perspective as an adult I would spend a lot of time in that creek splashing around looking for fossils just hanging out and you know um the knowledge I have now is that that creek water probably isn't the cleanest, right? It's um, some storm water runoff with who knows what else, honestly. It's definitely not clean water, but I guess I'm fine. And, you know, for my mom, it's I'm out of the house doing something, right? So I was very fortunate that I grew up in a safe neighborhood where I could go run around. And I was just running around all day, either with my friends or by myself. And I am lucky that I had these natural spaces, uh, such as a creek in the woods, because I really, really valued those. And I spent so much time in them. And I still really, really love being in nature. So the creek, where was at the bottom of my street? That's where it really began as being a creek with rocks and stuff like that. Because up to that point, it was cement. It was kind of this open storm drain. And it did go under the main road and beyond. I didn't really go that way because it wasn't, that wasn't the creek part. That was just a cement (laughs) storm drain open on the top. It's not like it was a a tunnel. It was only a tunnel where it had to go under the main road. And I didn't even really want to go under there. I thought it was really creepy. I, again, it's when you were a kid, it looked like this deep, dark, long tunnel when really it's just a normal two lane suburban road. I never wanted to go under the road. It really creeped me out. I didn't have a reason to anyway, but that was just a hard line I drew. I don't want to walk under the road. It's dark. There's just something ominous about it to me. So one day I'm in the creek with two of my best friends at the time. We're probably about 10. They're like, hey, how about we walk under the road? And I was like, guys, I don't know. I don't really want to do that. It kind of freaks me out. But they're like, come on, come on. It'll be fun. It'll be exciting. It's an adventure. And so eventually they convinced me. I had two of them with me, so I guess it was fine. So we walked under the road through the dark. It's not even completely dark. You can see the light on both ends. It's not a big deal. 
So we get to the other side and it was this big accomplishment. Wow, we made it. That wasn't so bad. That was fine. That was no big deal. So we turn around and cross back over to my street and go back, play in the creek, whatever. So we go back over, cross back through under the road, and we're talking and laughing. And I'm really jazzed because I was scared of doing that and we did that. And we're about to walk back towards the creek. We're in the tunnel, but it's it's still cement. The cement hasn't broken off into the rocks. And it's flat cement on the bottom and two cement walls on either side of us. The walls are probably six, seven feet tall. I'm guessing because I was a kid. But if I imagine myself being there now, they're probably six or seven feet tall. At the top of the cement wall, there's this kind of rustic wooden fence. And there was a lot of brush, just kind of unkempt. There's a really tall tree. I'm not sure what kind of tree. Maybe an elm tree or something. An old, I think it was dead too. An old dead tree and kind of shrubbery. Maybe like some honeysuckle. There was a ton of honeysuckle. Kind of unkempt. What I loved about this particular stretch of the creek where it kind of started at the bottom of my street is it had this bower of honeysuckle bushes and brush and shrubs and kind of formed this um, tunnel that you would walk through. So we had just walked out of the covered space under the road, the little tunnel, and this tree branch falls right in front of us on the ground. It wasn't huge. It was probably as thick as my arm, my child arm, but it was long, and I don't know if it would have really hurt any of us, but it definitely startled us. It fell. So you look up to see where that came from, where this tree limb fell from. And standing right at the top of the cement wall above us to our right, in front of this old elm tree, with his hands on the wooden fence that is at the top of the wall, is a man. And he's an older man. He has white hair and a white mustache. And he's wearing, like, a utility worker's kind of coveralls. And it, I think it's blue, it's dark colored, but I do remember there being kind of like a stitched name tag with a name, probably a name, but I don't remember the name. But I do remember that little detail, the stitched name tag, and he's wearing a, a baseball cap. And he's looking down at us. And he kind of has this look on his face like he's not mad? Well, maybe a little bit. Not furious, but very intimidating, almost like a scolding, stern kind of look on his face. And it would have just been a normal man, maybe a tree worker or something, except that he wasn't quite solid. He was just a little bit transparent. And his eyes, because I looked right into his eyes, they were completely white. There was no color to them. I get, I'm getting chills as I talk about it. So, so weird. So this tree branch falls, we look up, and there's this man standing there, right there. He's right there, looking down at us. I feel like we're in trouble, and he has all white eyes. I mean, it was so creepy. And we're there for- we see this, and not a second later, we just start sprinting towards where we can climb up out of the creek, where the dirt walls start, and we can climb up and get out of there. We start running- and it feels like in a dream when you're trying to run, but you're like, you're running, but it's slow motion. You're not covering any ground. And just like in a movie, one of my friends who's with me keeps tripping and falling. And we're like, come on, come on, come on. We're trying to help him up and just urging him to come on. So I'm just focusing on us getting out of the creek. We climb up out of the creek. We start running up the street back towards my house. We do go the way towards where the man would be standing because the man was standing really close to where my road starts, where it comes up off of the main road, really close to that. So I'm looking to see if he's there because I, as weird as he looks, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're in trouble or something. This man was mad. I'm looking for him. I don't see him. I also want to look for a truck because it seems like he was a utility worker. So there should be some sort of truck, but I don't see any truck I don't see anyone. It doesn't seem like anyone's there. But we just keep hauling ass back to my house. We don't stop running. We don't say anything. So we get to my house and we get in my room and we're all exasperated and sitting there together. And I ask my two friends, what did you guys just see? 
what did you guys see in the creek? And they told me the same thing. I made sure I didn't say what I saw first. And they told me that they saw the same thing. That they saw a man. I can't remember exactly how many details we shared that aligned. But I remember them saying that they saw it too. Eventually, I grew apart from these two friends and we lost touch. But I did send a message to one of the friends who was there and asked them if they remembered it. And they said they did. I had to just check, you know, like I was saying, with time passing, I was really starting to doubt that it happened. It, it seems like a pretty weird thing to happen. So I asked one of my friends who was there and he said, yeah, I remember that. He validated it. That was absolutely terrifying. So strange. Probably the strangest experience I've ever had. I've never seen another apparition or whatever you want to call that again. But there was full detail to this guy. Totally looked just like a normal person except for being semi-transparent and having all white eyes. I mean, that is... Every time I mention or think of that detail, it really gives me chills. Ugh, so spooky. I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm not trying to make up any kind of backstory or reasoning. It just happened and I can't explain it. And it was so strange and so spooky. One more story I will tell you regarding that creek. The paranormal experience wasn't really mine, but it's still very creepy. And even my part of the story is a little, it was a little creepy to me. So this would have been when I was in middle school. So I was probably 13 or so. I was walking home from school, making my way home, and um, my cell phone rings. I had a cell phone at that point, but um, there weren't smartphones yet, so this is just your kind of basic phone. Now, I'm not a big phone talker now. I actually kind of hate it, but as a teenager, I loved it. I think most teenagers do. Um, this was dial-up internet days, so you had to... Um, you know, one person can only be on the phone or the internet. You had to, you had to pick. And also, my mom really liked talking on the phone. So she went ahead and got me my own phone line for my room. So I could talk on the phone as much as I want, and so could she, and we could be on the computer and different times. <laughs> and not only did I have my own phone line, I also had one of those see-through plastic phones that when it rings, it lights up and you can see all the wires inside of it. To die for. I mean, I was really just living the dream. <laughs> so when I'm walking home from school this day, my cell phone rings. But what was weird is the phone number was from the phone in my room. My personal phone in my room in my house was calling me. And that was very strange because, as I said, uh, my mom would be at work when I was walking home from school. That's why I walked home from school. So no one was home. And also, even if it was my mom, she would just use the house phone to call me. So that in itself was really odd. So I picked it up. I answered the phone call. I said hello. And no one said anything back. The line was silent for a moment. And I said hello again. I was starting to get really kind of creeped out at this point. And then a voice answers me. But a very soft voice. And it's my friend. I'll call her uh, Pam. It's my friend Pam. She's calling me from my house phone, and she sounds upset. Not like she's crying. She, she she sounds very serious. The way she got into my house was we kept a key, a spare key to the house, in the mailbox. Really doesn't seem like a good idea, but I guess that tells you how safe of a neighborhood it was, right? Because it was never an issue. Anyone could have let themselves into our house. So that's what she did. And I think she asked me if I was going to be home soon, if I was coming home, if I was going to be home soon or something. I said, yeah, I'm on, I'm on my way. And she said, okay. And uh, hung up. So I could tell something was wrong, but she didn't say what. And it actually started raining, or it was raining or something. Anyway, someone was driving by, someone that I knew, someone's mom was driving by and ended up giving me a ride home the rest of the way, which was nice because I was still kind of far away. So I got to get home out of the rain soon. And I was also really curious as to what had happened to Pam. So I get home and my friend is there and she looks very somber and serious, and I asked her what happened, and she had been in the creek, the creek where I saw this man. Not too far from the same place, it was right where the creek actually started, where that cement ended and the rocks begin. 
she was there by herself. I don't know. She was walking home as well or was in the area and decided to go mess around in the creek. I'm not really sure why, but that's what she decided to do. And she was hanging out there, walking on the rocks, in the water, and there was this one tree that stuck out from the banks, the creek bank. It's a very specific tree because it it juts out in a way that you can sit on it. It's not a very large tree. It's a pretty narrow, thin trunk, but it hangs out over the water and you can go stand on it, and then the tree kind of curves upward so you can lean on the tree or sit your back against the tree and it overhangs the creek. So it's a very specific tree. So she looks up in this tree that sticks out from the bank. These banks aren't very high, so it's not like she has to look all the way up. She looks over and then looks up a little bit and is nearly eye level with a girl. She says there's a girl on this tree leaning against the tree trunk so that her feet are on the trunk, the part of the trunk that comes out straight from the the creek bank. And then her body is leaned against the tree as it goes upward. And she's leaned against it and she said her hand is outstretched towards my friend. And this girl is leaning out over her, reaching towards her, and just has this look of distress or fear or something. This clear, distressed emotion on her face. And I think she said the girl was blue or something, too. My friend knew when she saw this girl on the tree that this was not a living person because my friend had um, an ability. I was called The Sixth Sense because that movie was popular at the time. But she had the ability to see ghosts and she did so pretty frequently. So she's she knew that this was a ghost, but it was very alarming. There was something, I mean, having a ghost right in your face is probably pretty alarming, but there's something, some emotion she was conveying, and she wasn't expecting to see her right there, and it's raining, and she's in this creek by herself, and so she, I guess, leaves and goes straight to my house, because she's on my street, um, probably not knowing if I'm home yet or not, and calls me, and then waits for me to get home. I don't have contact with that friend anymore, but they had a lot of interesting stories, and I have a lot of interesting stories with them of paranormal experiences. So I don't know what was going on with that creek. It didn't stop me from going in the creek. I still loved it, but I didn't have anything else weird happen there. And I don't have any more memories in that house that really stand out. And then we moved out of that house when I, about when I started high school. I was perceived to be a haunted house. A lot of other people in my life at that time thought the same thing. Family members, friends, what was really going on? I don't know. But those are the things I still remember really clearly. If there is a normal explanation to them, I didn't figure it out at the time. So those are not by any means all of my paranormal experiences. They seem to occur in chunks of time. When I look back on them, I just kind of group them into these chronological chunks. They kind of come in waves. I always appreciate people sharing their stories because it is a very vulnerable act, even though I'm in this corner of the uh, the internet and podcasts and all that where I'm used to hearing paranormal stories and it's something I'm open to. Even still, it is vulnerable putting your story out there because many people will just very easily dismiss you. So you are putting yourself out there when you tell these kind of stories. I appreciate anyone who does that. Figured it's about time for me to do so myself. So, those are some of my stories. I'll be back eventually with more of my stories, but a lot sooner with reading other people's stories. If you have any personal experiences, please, if you're comfortable, feel free sharing them in comments, or you can email me. That's um, that's what makes life interesting to me, is these unexplainable things. Everybody has at least one strange story. That's what we're here to collect and to share and to appreciate So, thank you for taking the time to listen to some of my stories. I'll see you soon. Until next time, good night.